Today I'm tying one of my favorite tarpon flies. There's a great story behind Dude, it. That was a and I'll tell you, that but I'm going to show you the Polish poon hound. I use it from East La Holbox, Mexico, over <laughs> to Key West, and it's been a fantastic tarpon fly for me over the years. Let's see, it's a flash. That sink yeah. There we go. Got you got it. it. Got him. We're on. Hey everybody, welcome to Familiar Waters and FWFishing.com. I'm Mike Pulaski. Today I'm tying one of my favorite tarpon flies. It's called the Polish Poon Hound. Reminds me of my dog BJ. It's a story I'll tell you about. Has rabbit fur, arctic fox, uh, all the sexy stuff you want in a tarpon bug. So let's hit the vise and I'll show you how to tie it. So we're using a Gamakatsu SC15 for this hook. I like this hook for tarpon flies. Uh, two aught in this case. You can go smaller, go one aught. Um, or you can use a TMCO 600 SP also would be a great hook for this bug. I use both. Uh, in this case, we're going with the Gami. Going to use black mono tying thread. Six aught works fine. Get a little stretch in that thread uh, and keep from building up a ton of bulk until the end. We're going to use rabbit fur on the poon hound and so I need a fouling guard for that rabbit fur I'm using 25 pound mono here 20 pound mono works fine anything in that range is great I'm just going to tie it in and lock it on to the side of the hook and leave it and then one thing I like to do with this fly is I like to kind of cover up that mono it's just an aesthetics thing you know for beauty for me uh, and so I use you can either use rabbit fur from the strip you're going to be using, uh, or in this case, I'll use Arctic Fox, lending to the name of the fly, Polish Poonhound. So once I tie in that first uh, piece of mono for the fouling guard, I'll get out some Arctic Fox. Just enough to cover it up, make it look pretty. And that's it. Purely for aesthetics. I don't think it's necessary. This fly will fish just fine without it. But I like it because it makes it look better. And it's my fly. Next, I'm going to tie in two pieces of crystal flash. A little bit of flash is good. A lot of flash is too much. And I'll start by tying them in up higher on the hook so I can wrap back and separate them. Once I get back, I'm going to set these to the side of this tuft of arctic fox, get them in position. And wrap them in place. Next, zonker strip. Red zonker strip. Beautiful stuff. Uh, I'm tying this in the red because that's what we use on that East the Whole Boss show. If you haven't seen it, there'll be a card that'll come up that'll show you uh, what we're talking about. But uh, you can tie this in a ton of different colors. Chartreuse, black and purple, black and red. Um, yellows work fantastic. We're just going with red today because that's what we used on that Whole Boss show. And so you see, I'm wetting it so it's way easier to manage. And I've pre-snipped it that I have triangles on each side. And I pulled the rabbit fur from the strip from the tip of it where I'm going to tie it in. I'm trying to keep the bulk of this fly tied back on this hook right to where the bend starts. So I can leave a lot of room for the head. A third of this is going to be head. So I want to leave the room for that head. So that rabbit strip is tied in. Now I'm going to go about a third of the way down this rabbit strip and punch a hole for that uh, mono fouling guard that I've tied in. And so I just do it by hitting it with my scissors. And about there looks good. And then kind of snipping through it a couple times is the easiest way that i found. Just be careful you don't cut your finger as you come through it. Run that mono up and through.
and pull it out and then get to where you want that tail to sit and pinch it and what that does is it'll keep it flat on top and you can still cover it and so it won't look unnatural sticking to that fur it won't be this big hump coming out the back wrap that in place Snip and wrap back. Got my thread there, but I'm able to save it. So wrap that back. Next, I'm going to give just a touch of flash up around here. By the way, now that we've got length of our rabbit strip in, we can take this crystal flash and kind of snip it right at the tips. So that'll give us a little flash underneath. We're going to get the next piece of flash, which is just a little red polar chenille. Uh, and it's the UV polar chenille. So you can see it right here. And it's just a touch of flash. I'm going to give it one wrap around, make sure it spreads. And then we're going to put this behind a hackle as well. So I don't want to make this thing gaudy. I just want to give it a little bit of sparkle. One full wrap. Lock it down. snip it and I can save the rest of that for later start that all back and make sure you've got it even it'll get caught up underneath the fly then I'm going to add two hackles big saddle hackles got one red that's barred black could be straight red and one black and I'm going to tie these in as a collar on this fly kind of separate that rabbit strip area from the front head which I'm going to tie in a second wrap that in and I just lock those hackle feathers in you can snip them at that point they're locked in now I don't need hackle pliers for this because these are already big enough that I can just use my fingers keep stroking it heard somebody call it preening the other day which is a pretty apt description We'll go with one more. And so now, as I stroke these back and wrap them back, kind of lock them in that cone, right? If I were just to lock it off here, uh, it could be a black death. And so um, that's why Sam Flea kept calling it a reverse black death. However, this is where the Polish poonhound part of this bug comes in. I was fishing a ton of tarpon toads, but I didn't always love that horizontal plane on the tarpon toad where it was that flat head. And so I started tying them vertically so that you'd kind of get that regular bait fish style head. And then I was reading John Gearock. And if you're a fly fisherman, you haven't read John Gearock, you should read him. He is hilarious. Uh, great stuff. But he was tying bugs with hair from his Labrador. And I thought, huh, I've got a great hunting dog named BJ. And maybe I could tie a bug from her fur. And so I gathered some up and put it on a fly, tied this, you know, version of the tarpon toad with the Labrador hair. And called it the Polish Poonhound. The hound being, obviously, the dog. And it was great. Worked great. Smoked tarpon in Key West. Crushed them down in Isla Holbosch. I'm like, this is a great bug. And so I started tying it. But obviously, I couldn't keep stealing BJ's hair for everything. Um, and I didn't want to go around the house kind of picking up all the hair that was laying around. And so I started using Arctic Fox. 
and it works fantastically. So I'm going to take a clump and build myself a collar out of this. And this is going to breathe out here. It's going to be a little stiffer than marabou, but it's still going to be uh, really buggy and lifelike on this fly. I'm going to get the top with one. Make sure I've got that even. I'm going to snip this out. I'm going to save this, and I'll show you why in a second. I'll take another small section, about half of what I used on the top. I'm going to put a little color underneath on the bottom. Match those tips. Don't like that. Tips are too long. There are too many guard hairs. You can pull some of the guard hairs out for this bottom. Again, this is, again, for aesthetics. Just going to make it look pretty down here. Finish out that collar. Get it centered on my fly. I don't want this to spin. I want it to stay in position. And then wrap. Snip that out. And add it to that pile. So next, I'm going to create a dubbing loop, and we're going to finish off this head. And I'm going to use that Arctic Fox for this head as well. And so I don't need a ton of Arctic Fox. I just want enough to give that head some body without being tightly tightly packed and so I'm going to match the tips up here and then I'm going to snip this in half and that's what we're going to create our dubbing loop out of tips we can go half and half change directions on them it's all going to spin out eventually so it doesn't really matter but start with the tips up top and the lower section down below. Trying to get out on me there. Once you get it pinched in, you can kind of adjust your taper here and get everything where you want it. And then just spin that dubbing loop. Excellent. You can brush that out or comb it out a little bit. And then grab that with your hackle pliers. You can do it on the dubbing tool if you want to. I prefer to do it with my hackle pliers so I don't let it slip because I always forget. So now all I'm going to do is I'm going to wrap this in tight, stacked up against itself, and brush it back in between each stroke. I get out here to the front, lock it off, trim it.
So we've got that head, nice dubbing loop for the head. I'm going to comb that out. You can brush it out, comb it out, however you want to get that to breathe out there a little bit. And then we're going to trim this thing up and make it look super sweet. Okay. It's kind of a sparse head. And so any, if you do too much trimming, you're going to thin it out too much. We want to let this thing breathe. You want it to still have some body to it, but we want to get more of that bait fish profile here. And so all we're going to do is lightly with the scissors, come at it from the front and just trim out the front of this bug so you can see it and see where that collar is going to lie, kind of move stuff around, figure out where you want it to sit and pull that bug into position and then trim very little at a time. Take the sides. There you go. You leave yourself a beautiful profile with that head. You can see, if you look at that nice fishy head up front, great body, great collar with that fox fur. And then finally, if I'm fishing in places like Holbosch uh, or where I need it to sink, I will put a barbell eye on there. Uh, if I am not, sometimes I can just leave it finished just like this, or I can put a hollow eye, prism eye on the front. And for, so for this one, I will put that prism eye on the front here. Drop a super glue. Get that thing sticky. So that's it, the Polish Poonhound. Reminds me of my fabulous Labrador BJ, but it also absolutely crushes on tarpon anywhere in the Gulf of Mexico. I've caught some big dogs down in Isla Holbosch, Mexico with it, all the way up to Key West. It's one of my first go-to bugs when we're fishing tarpon. You can tie it in a variety of colors, but if you're looking for new tarpon flies, Polish Poonhound is a great one. It's an easy tie. It's quick. You can knock out a bunch in a hurry. Be sure to subscribe. Give us a thumbs up. Leave us a comment down below. We'd love to hear from you. Appreciate you watching, and I'll catch you on the next piece of Familiar Waters.